Good evening. Hello, how are you this evening? John and I are really pleased to be with you tonight. Yep. Um, I'm glad you could join us, and I know some of you have been with us all week. Tonight, um, events get heavier, more solemn. We see that people are joining us, and I have to look close because I'm old. Christine Oris Miller's with us, Debbie Cease, Sue Steger, Rebecca Hill. Oh, um, Lisa, Jackie, Molly is back again, and you're going to be nice tonight because it's a it's a solemn night. Blake, hello, mum, mum. That's what she says, and I say. Hello. Rich is with us and Sherry. And Jim Lewis is back. Guys, Jordan. Jordan. I don't know. Mary Ritz. Mary Ritz is one of our um, longtime friends and a wonderful lady. Cindy Slack, Jan Fordella, Darlene Cooster. Sharon, Bill Mitchell, and I hope Jackie's with them. Shirley Chrissy. It's good Su to see all these familiar names. Susan Mayer, Frances is with us. Karen Miller, and I'm sure the Miller clan. Hi, Marlon. Hi, Wilma. <laughs> Lori is with us tonight, and Billy Murphy. I hope you had a good birthday, Billy. Judy Ashcombe, Brenda Edwards, Robin, Dorothy Sharp, Thomas. Hi, Dorothy. Uh, Kim. Hi, Kim. Char. Mm-hmm. Donna, my cousin. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Robin. Jennifer Gerber. Hello, Jennifer. Hey, don't look at my hair. Jennifer takes care of my hair, and it's pretty scary right now. Well, look what she did to my hair. <laughs> Natalie. Just, just <laughs> You're supposed to be serious yes, tonight. I'm, I'm sorry. I realized that as soon as I said it. Kay Gall and Jackie and Adelie and probably Bob. It's good to have you. And Mike is there with Kay. See, John's on good behavior tonight, Mike. He's not even got a pick on you. So. Don't you usually tease him? Oh, okay. And Paul Senspa. Hi, Paul. And Janie. Oh, and Paul's there with his wonderful wife, Barb. Oh, Senspa. Yes. Brenda Edwards says everybody's hair is looking a little crazy. Yes, it is. Even our dogs. <laughs> yeah. And Eric is watching, and probably Eileen is with him, hope and probably so. Lulu is with Rich. Hope Eileen's feeling good. I hope so, too. We've been praying for her. Donna Thomas. It was another rainy day today. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not. <laughs> that makes for beautiful flowers in a few weeks. And growing grass. Celeste. Oh, Celeste. Eileen and Stuver is watching. Yes. Hey, Celeste, I hope you're doing okay. And if I miss saying your name, it's because my eyesight is like lousy. And we're doing this from the phone, and the phone is across the kitchen counter, so it's three feet away. And that's why I'm leaning forward. Well, are you ready? Oh, I want to tell you tomorrow night we'll be here at 7 o'clock. And tomorrow night we're, we're not doing any kind of greeting. It's um, Good Friday, and we're going to move directly. We'll start, uh, have it turned on before 7, a few minutes before 7, and we'll be starting... a 
a few minutes after seven. So please join us tomorrow night, but there won't be any uh, talking or anything like that. Joanne, do you want to say anything before we get started? I think we're ready. Well, or do you think we should go a little further? Give them a little more time. Well, it's almost five after. Okay, go ahead then. Okay. I always listen to my husband. Tonight is a special night. For tonight we gather to commemorate the Lord's Supper. And to hear his call for us to love and to serve in his name. And this is really a strange Maundy Thursday because we always have communion on Maundy Thursday, but tonight there is no communion. Well, there is no holy communion, but we are definitely communing. We are communing with each other and we are communing with God, but just in a different way, not through the sacrament. Tonight we're going to reflect on what it means to be Christ representative in the world and how to serve Christ as Christ serve, how to serve Christ by serving others. So welcome, welcome to our home and welcome to the service. This, beloved, this is the night that Christ gathered his disciples in the upper room. This is the night that Christ shared a meal as a sign of his great love. Oh, beloved, this is the night. That Christ took a towel, knelt down, and washed the disciples' feet. Yeah. And then he showed them how to love and serve each other. This is the night. That the Lord has made. Amen. Will you pray with me? Ever gracious God, we come together this evening, friends, family, as we come to you in this new thing called Facebook. We gather as Jesus did in, in, in a room so long ago. We come bearing the marks, the burdens of a bitter and broken world. We come with dry and thirsty spirits. It reminds us of our need and of your great sufficiency, God. We ask that you refresh us, that you would make us whole with the cup of forgiveness. Draw us nearer to each other in service and closer even to you. As this night advances, deepen, deepen in us the sense of your steadfast love for us through Jesus Christ, our friend and Redeemer, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh. You're not going to be looking at John and I all night. We're doing something different tonight. And you are invited to the upper room. You're invited to be with Jesus and his friends and to be part of the story. So hear the story once again with fresh ears. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them till the end. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he gets up from the table takes off his outer robe, ties a towel around his waist, and pours water into a basin.
and he begins to wash the disciples begins to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around his waist. Jesus moves around the circle, washing the feet of the disciples. Peter is watching. All kinds of thoughts go through his head. And he is confronted with all kinds of assumptions and all kinds of ideas. Watching Jesus wash the feet of the disciples is turning Peter's world upside down. This is not the way it's to be. He wonders if he should be helping Jesus. He wonders, is he going to wash my feet too? Could he let Jesus wash his feet? He'd lived with Jesus for three years. He'd gotten used to traveling with Jesus and eating with Jesus. But foot washing was much different. That's a different level of relationship. That's a place of vulnerability. A leader willing to serve the followers. This isn't right. It's so confusing. A question haunts us tonight. Will we let Jesus wash our feet? Are we willing to allow our Lord to wash our calloused, imperfect feet? The easy and automatic response is, of course, yes, Lord, wash my feet, please. But put yourself in the story. Imagine you are Peter. Does that make it seem any different? Does it feel different then? Can you understand how awkward this makes Peter feel and how awkward it makes us feel? Well, you're invited to be at the table with Jesus, laughing and talking and enjoying the meal. Okay, I want you to envision Jesus getting up and picking up the bowl and beginning to wash feet. Jesus is in front of you right now. He kneels down. Feel his eyes as they lock under your eyes. Feel him reaching out to take your sandal off. Oh, this is so contrary to what we're taught. We're taught to serve the leaders, not to have the leader serve us. The leader is supposed to behave in a certain way, in a certain manner, and that definitely does not include washing feet. But I invite you to stay with Jesus. Don't run away from it or rush into it. Allow Jesus to wash your feet. And as he washes your feet, Believe that all the things that you are trying to keep hidden in this world are being washed away. All the secrets, all the hurt, all the pain, things that he already knows about you, things that you no longer have to try to keep from him. See how free you feel, how new, how strong. Be open before Christ, keeping nothing back. He sees your best sides, and he also sees your not-so-good sides. But give them all to Jesus. Even though we know that God knows all about us and all of our humanness, we often try to protect ourselves, and sometimes we even try to protect God from us. And so to get close, to allow Jesus to wash our feet may seem scary. Is it scary or is it unsettling for you, the thought of the Master, the Savior, the Redeemer of the world washing your feet? 
Do you feel that you deserve this service? After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, Do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That's what I am. So if I, the master and the teacher, washed your feet, now you must wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above the master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, you act like it and you live a blessed life. Beloved, hear this poem. It's called The Lord Needs You by St. Teresa of Avila. Hear these words. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks. Compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. Yours are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks. Compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. What verses? How many? One and four. <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus. Fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor. Neighbors are black and white. Neighbors are near and far away. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have for you. Amen. Jesus washed feet so that we would understand grace and service. The great triumph and the joy is not about what we deserve, but what God offers just because God loves us. The triumph continues as we go and serve others serving in the name of Jesus the Christ. Come on. Hear this prayer of confession. God of mercy and love, when the disciples sat unmoving at that table, each waiting for Jesus to wash their feet, a part of each one of them, a part of each one of us, rather, sat there with them. We have all sat unmoving, waiting for someone else to do what we should be doing ourselves. And when Peter did not want Jesus to wash his feet, a part of each one of us joined him in that rejection. We have all resisted the new hierarchy of Jesus, 
where those who are the greatest becomes loving servants to all. Forgive us for immobility, for our fear. Help us to again return to following Jesus who would lead us to hope, forgiveness, and eternal life. Amen. This is the time of um, silence that you would rest in the stillness and attentive to what the Spirit brings to you right now. Open your hearts, receive grace, receive forgiveness, knowing that God loves you. Christ went to the cross because of his love for you. Christ has paid the price for your and my sins. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are loved and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are loved you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Join me as we turn our hearts and our thoughts to Jesus Christ as we pray. Holy God, you hold us in your hands. We're hoping to be strengthened consecrated, preserved to serve you by serving others. May we be both a blessing and an encouragement to other people. May we hold others as, as dearly as you hold them. Pour your Holy Spirit out upon us so that we may be your disciples and faithful witnesses now and forevermore. Amen. We are disciples and servants of Christ. We came tonight asking God to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hands to serve Him. We have been challenged to take Christ's example into our hearts, to humble ourselves, and to love one another as Christ loves us. We came tonight asking for forgiveness, asking to be washed clean. We leave, we leave tonight in the strength. We leave tonight in the care of this community. We leave tonight with the love and blessing of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So go to love Christ, to love as Christ loved and to serve in his name. The events of tonight do not conclude until Sunday morning when we celebrate the resurrection. Keep the faith, keep the vigil through Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Remember, even in our darkest hour, who we are and whose we are. So go to give yourself for others in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in love in the name of the one who loves forever. God bless and amen. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful night. May